What's up guys, you're watching Dan's How To Videos and today is my review on the iPhone 5. Let's get started. Now the iPhone 5 has gone through a couple of changes since the iPhone 4S. Not too much though in terms of look or design, but a couple of things that are nice to have and a couple of things that I just really don't like at all. We'll go through a couple of them right now. As you can see, it's got the new larger four inch screen here, so you're gonna get a lot more real estate when you're watching videos. That's a plus for me, honestly. You've also got the 720p HD camera in the front, and that's gonna be really good for people who use FaceTime. Going along to the side of the phone here, you'll notice that it's now painted metal as opposed to just the metal that the iPhone 4S and the iPhone 4 had. This is good and bad in a way. It looks good, but it damages easily. As you can see, I've scratched up the side from dropping it a couple of times. Now my iPhone 4S did scratch, but it did not penetrate the metal. Now I dropped this phone a couple of times and it looks like it's actually penetrated the metal on the side. So that's a downfall for this phone. Now the iPhone 5 has a good solid back to it. It no longer has that glass finish, which was horrible in my mind because you drop it once, that thing was cracked and it would be done for, you'd have to go back and get it replaced. The new metal back is a lot more durable. The black phone, you're gonna have an issue because some people are claiming that the black is actually scratching right off the phone and you would see the metal through that. Now I don't have a black phone, but I have read the reviews here. So anyway, I went with the white because of that. And uh, if you want more durability, people are saying the white is going to uh, handle itself a little bit better. Now the bottom and top side of the iPhone 5 are still made of glass, but that's not a problem. If you have a case, you're good to go. And you've got a little bit better camera here with a sapphire or crystal lens, whatever they call it. Not enough to make somebody want to switch from an iPhone 4S though. Now as we look at the bottom of the iPhone 5, you'll notice that the headphone jack is there, the speaker system looks a little bit different, and major is the lightning port adapter. This is a much smaller adapter, it looks nice, it's a lot easier to put in the iPhone. You can put it in either way, and it uh, works a lot better than the 30 pin adapter which would crack if you would put it in the wrong way. The one downfall this has is if you have old iPhone accessories, you're gonna to need to purchase an adapter for this. So that's kind of a downfall, but you know, it does need to be done. Now in terms of internals, it does have an A6 chip inside, which is gonna allow you to run games that are a little bit technical, a little bit faster, a little bit smoother. And uh, that's pretty much it for the major changes. If you wanna find out about all the changes, you can just go to the Apple site and uh, have a look at that on your own. It'll tell you everything about it. But in terms of what you're gonna get inside your phone, it's basically iOS 6, it's set up with that, or iOS 6 higher, whatever they have when you purchase your phone. But uh, you're gonna get all the new apps, like uh, the new Maps app, which is a little bit iffy, but it's going to work, and it's going to be updated and work better in the future. You're also gonna get the new app, uh, Passbook, which I don't really use, and that also needs to be updated and set up, because not many apps work with it right now. And basically that's it. You're gonna have the larger screen real estate. It's gonna look better on YouTube. You're gonna have to download the native YouTube app from Google now. You're gonna lose the one that Apple had with the iPhone. But in terms of how this phone works, it works really fast. The camera's awesome. The 720p camera is really good, especially for vloggers. This thing is a great phone. Now, if you're upgrading from an iPhone 4 or an iPhone 4S, this is not gonna be the phone to switch to or make or break phone. If you have an iPhone 4, it's more likely you'll wanna switch to this phone than the 4S because you're gonna get LTE features in here and that's a lot faster than 3G. This is actually faster than my home internet. So if you have a LTE carrier that's capable of providing that to you, then maybe this is a phone to switch to. Now, if you're switching from a 4S, I would recommend that you don't switch right now. Wait for the next iPhone or wait for the phone after that because this is not much of a change from those phones. It is thinner, does look a little bit thinner, it is a little bit lighter, but that's not a big game breaker because the iPhone 4S was already light and it was already thin. Now, if the real estate having a 3.5 inch screen is an issue for you and you want the bigger screen, then maybe you need to switch. Personally, I switched from the 4S to the 5 because of the bigger screen and because of the LTE. I wanted to experience that. I never had anything with LTE in it before. Now, as I used the phone for a while, I've been using it for about a month, maybe a month and a half now, this phone is not really that much different from the 4S. All the apps seem to work exactly the same. All the apps basically that are on the iPhone 4S are on the iPhone 5. And I'm finding that some apps aren't even optimized for the iPhone 5, so you'll have these little black bars at the top of the apps on the side of them when you're playing games and stuff like that. But in terms of the hardware and what this phone gives you, it's really good, solid phone. You're not gonna be disappointed. The one thing is, if you've been using iOS devices for a long time, I've been using it since the iPod Touch first generation, which was I still have right now. 
I'm getting bored of iOS. Like this is the same deal every time. You have your apps, it looks the same, everything's similar. They do a little couple of tweaks here and there, like notification center at the top, but nothing ever really changes and makes you think, wow. Siri was really cool at the beginning, but I find that I only use it in the car. And uh, that's pretty much it. Like if there was a little bit more of a, you know, excitement going on, like some of the Windows phones, those look cool. Now they have the drop down boxes and different things like that. That kind of looks cool. And that could be a cool design that iOS could interpret. Like I like how iOS now, when you look at your folders, it's not just a generic app in there. It's actually the apps that you're using. But that's again, just a little tweak. So if I were you and you had the iPhone 3GS, definitely look into upgrading to this phone. If you have the iPhone 4, maybe you want to upgrade, but you could wait to the iPhone 6 or whatever they call it. iPhone 4S users, don't bother upgrading to this just yet, especially since you got that phone a year ago and uh, you don't need to really get that. And you can get the iPhone 4S right now for like 100 bucks or free on some plans. So really do your research before buying this phone and you got a ton of android phones like the galaxy s3 that are just as good as the iphone 5 here and uh, are a little bit more exciting in terms of the operating system but personally i love this phone i'm glad i have it but i am getting a little bit bored with ios also guys if you do purchase this phone in the black version or white you need a case do not just take this thing around you drop this thing once you're going to have scratches as i do here all over the side and you're going to damage this phone. Anyway guys, hopefully you liked this review. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I will see you guys in the next one. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button down below. Thanks for watching.